All right, we are back to do another one of the uh, demo series I've been doing with the Boss Katana, Katana uh, 100 watt head that I've got here. I, if, I'm not sure if it's in frame, but if it is, you probably notice it looks a little different than it usually does. That's because I've got it flipped over where the controls are on the front. Basically, I've got it setting on the front face uh, because I need to be able to see the colors on the uh, booster knobs and all that. And those colors are kind of hard to see normally. So there it is. I'm running it into the Marshall cab. I've got an overdrive pedal here in between the guitar and the amp in case I want to throw some overdrive in with some of these mods. So that's what we're doing today. We're going to do the mods and effects. So uh, there is a good bit of them. So I'm not going to spend too long on any one of them. So we're going to go through each one of them and just play around with them some and let you guys see what they sound like. Um, now, they've all got a lot of options where you can change how it sounds. This is just how I've got it set up. demo for the Boss Katana. Uh, I did one of these a couple months ago, I think it was, on all the boosters, where I just went through and let you guys hear each one the way I like to use it, and that's what we're going to do with this. So, um, basically, I'm just going to run my Epiphone SG here, because this is the one that I use to actually set it up, um, set up all these effects in here. We're running it into the Tom's Line Vintage Distortion pedal, into the clean channel of the amp, with the various effects I'm going to turn off and on so you can hear how they sound. Um, so, uh, that's what we're going to do. We'll just go through each one real quick because there are um, a good bit of them. There's 20-something of them total that I'm going through. I'm not going through all of like the EQs and stuff like that because... They're just EQs. You guys know how EQ works. So um, we'll start off and go through. The first one we're going to look at here, well, that is actually just going to be the clean sound we got. Okay, so that's just the clean tone. That's none of the effects turned on or anything like that. Okay, so the first one is going to be just your chorus. So. Pretty good sounding chorus, and if you throw a distortion on with it, it sounds pretty good there too. So, uh, the chorus is nice. The next one is going to be the flanger. Effect that sets sort of like a jet flanger, real slow. All right, so that's your flanger. It's a nice, pretty sounding effect. I kind of like it. Uh, next, we're gonna look at the phaser, and just this is just the regular phaser, not the the, uh, the phase ninety one they've got built in. So here we go. throw on a little of the overdrive to go with it. So, that's our uh, first set there. The next one we're going to look at 
It's going to be your Univibe, which is always a fun effect. That's with the Univibe off. And there's with it back on again. So it's a nice, it's, it's a nice shimmery sort of effect. Uh, all right, the next one is your tremolo. I love some tremolo. Here we go. So there's your tremolo, very cool. And as with all these, it's got a range to it. You can make it really fast, really slow, whatever. All right, so here we go with the vibrato. And then if you throw on a little overdrive with it. So, that is that. The next one we're going to look at, switch banks here. All right. Uh, we'll go back to our... That's just our clean. So now we're going to be looking at the rotary effect. So there's your rotary effect. Pretty simple. Like I said, it's got a wide range. It can do that. It can go a lot slower. It can go a lot faster. So kind of dial it in where you want it. Okay, the next one here is the ring mod. Uh, it's one of the effects that, um, if you've seen my gonculator video, I've got a pedal that's the gonculator from DOD. It's a ring mod distortion pedal. Ring mod is a fun effect, but it's one that's just kind of, it's kind of hard to find a real good place for. So we're going to play around with it a little bit but I don't use it much, so here we go. And then you can throw a little overdrive in the mix. Okay, so there's your ring mod. Uh, as I said, it's one of the weirder effects, but it, there it is. Uh, next, we're going to look at what's called slow gear, which is basically sort of an auto fade in sort of sound. And then you can throw a little distortion in there. So you can hear it sort of just auto swells a little bit. Um, there's a sensitivity knob in the tone studio where you can change how how much how sensitive it is, um, and it's kind of fun. But if I'm doing swells, I'd rather have a volume pedal that I can just swell it in myself. So there's that. Um, 
The next one we're going to look at is the slicer effect. I love this one. This is a lot of fun. So here we go. I'm going to slice it up. Lots of fun, and you can throw some distortion in there. Now, the slicer works a lot better on like single note sort of stuff. It's almost a synthy type of sound. It doesn't work great on chords. You can use it with chords, but it's not as good, I don't think. Um, it's a very cool effect. It's got like 20 different pattern patterns that you can put in for the... How it's sliced. Uh, I forget which pattern I've got this on, but they all sound a little different. It's kind of fun. It's a, it's a cool effect, but it's one you wouldn't use a lot. So, there you go. Alright, the next one is the Boss Comp Compressor. Some reason it's just not sounding like I wanted to. All right, so there's your compressor. Um, that one's actually set up kind of like a boost almost, uh, but it also gives you... that nice, even sort of sound that you expect from a compressor. Um, no matter how hard or soft you pick, everything sort of sounds the same level, which is you know what you want with a compressor, so there we go. All right, this next one we're gonna do is the limiter, which is sort of similar to compressors, but they work different, and you have to ask someone who's like a audio tech exactly what the difference is because uh well i don't really know i guess one limits and one compresses i don't but here we go So it kind of evens everything out, kind of like a compressor. They might be really similar. I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Okay, the next one we're going to look at, if I can get my feet to work how I want them to, is the Guitar Sim. And I've got this set up to do the solid body to a semi-hollow semi body effect. So, here we go. This is without the effect. So, uh, you can hear it sort of gives the sound a little more almost resonance. It makes it sound like a semi-hollow, so very cool. Uh, the next one is the Wave Synth. This is another funky one. This one actually sounds really cool if you mix this with the slicer. Just throwing that out there, but here we go.
All right, so there's your wave synth. The next one is the octave effect, which is one of my favorites. Um, I've actually got a separate video I did about uh, how I use the octave effect usually, because someone had asked. Um, the way I like to use it is as almost a thickening. Uh, I, I try to keep it really low where it's very subtle and you almost don't hear it. You really don't notice it unless you turned it off. Um, so here we go. I'm going to turn it off real quick and play a little line and then I'll turn it back on. So as you can hear, it sort of just fattens up the sound a little bit, makes it sound a little, little thicker. And if you throw on an overdrive, it's great. So that's the uh, octave. The only thing I will say about the octave effect is it does not do chords very well. It's not much of a poly octave effect. It's much more it's a single octave. I don't know what the word for that is. It does one note really good. And tracks the note, but if you try to throw multiple notes, chords and stuff in, it's, it's, I guess it gets confused. I don't know. It doesn't sound as good in my mind, but that's me. It's opinions. Do what you want. Um, all right, for the next one, we are on the pitch shift. Uh, I've got it set for the two voice setting. There's actually different settings within it. And I've got a one. One voice is a sub octave. So it's an octave below. And then one of the second voice is a plus plus a fifth. So it makes it makes a single note turn into a chord essentially, which is kind of cool. Now, so here we go. Now, works great for single notes. Again, sort of like with the octave, it doesn't work very well for uh, chords because especially when you do multiple voices, it's trying to do all the notes. So let's do just a D chord here. You know, without it, sounds fine. Turn it on. And it's just this dissonant pile of notes. It doesn't sound good at all. So there is that. The next one, we're going to look at is the harmonist effect, which is great if you're, you know, if you're a solo guitar player, but you're playing a solo or something like that, and you want a little or a lead part, and you want to have that. Uh, I'm trying to think of a band that does that a lot. I think Dire Straits did it some. Um, then Lizzy did a lot of it. Uh, the the harmonized guitar solos with two guitars, which is awesome, but. If you only have one guitar, well, how do you do that? Well, you use something like this harmonist effect. So I've got it set to the one voice. You can do multiple voices with this one as well. I think you can do like four or five. Uh, but I've got it set to the single voice, and it's in the key of E major. So we're going to play a little, little lick in E major here and just let it harmonize with it. We'll, turn, we'll play it without the effect first, though. thing with a harmonizer you'll want to keep in mind is it sounds really bad if you hit a note that's not in that key so we were in E let's go and play a uh... there we go an, a G sharp it's trying to harmonize with it but it's kind of hard to do that because it's not in the right key so here we go or there we go the next one is the humanizer which is fun um 
I've got it set up to do auto. You can do, have it do auto or picking, which makes it sort of And Alexa has decided to read us a verse. So we're just going to carry on. Um, humanizer, set to auto instead of sense, because I don't want it to sense, I want it to automatically do it. And it's going to go between the U and the E sound. So here we go. <laughs> And then you can do a chord with it. So there's that. All right. And then the last little batch here. Uh, we've got three of them left. We're going to do a the first one here is the phase 90. So here we are clean again. Now we'll turn on the effect. Overdrive. So there's your phase 90. Uh, the next one is Flanger 117E. It's one of the ones that added with the... Uh... That's the phase 90. It's set to be sort of, it almost has a univibe type sound, I guess. But uh, And then this last one we're going to look at is the acoustic sim. Um, if you're an electric guitar player and you've got a song where there's, you need an acoustic part, you got two options, really. Option one is you switch guitars and get an actual acoustic. Um, and with the katana, you could do that and switch it to the acoustic channel and it'll sound great. I do that a lot. But, let's say you don't have an acoustic, or you don't want to switch it, or you're just stubborn, whatever. Well, you can turn on the acoustic sim built into the katana, and it's fairly convincing. It's not perfect, it's not going to sound exactly like an acoustic. And you can't do some of the stuff you can do with an acoustic. You can't sit there and, like, hit the body and get that, those sort of sounds or anything. But, it'll give you a little bit of that acoustic sound. So, we're going to turn... Play, play something, play some chords with it off, then we'll play some chords with it on, and we'll see what the difference is.
So there, there's the acoustic sim. And that is going to be all of the ones I'm going to look at for right now. There are a few more effects under the mod or effects layout in Tone Studio. But uh, most of them are like, there's a couple of EQs you can do. There's the Waz, which I'm going to give their own separate video because there's enough of them and there's enough of these. And I think Waz is just a great effect to separate on its own. Um, so we'll have another video for all the Waz. You know, the T-Waz, the auto Waz, the different pedal Waz. And I'll probably, when I do that video, I'm probably going to compare all of them to my favorite Waz, which is the Ibanez WD7 uh, screaming demon because I can and it's my favorite wah so keep an eye out for that video to come we'll also be doing one on delays and one on reverbs and I'm going to do I've got I'm going to be doing a similar series of videos for my HX effects which I did a first look at a little while ago um, and look at the different stuff that's built into there those two things the hx effects and the boss katana by the way work really well together um i haven't gotten into what they call the four cable method um which is basically where you run the guitar into the effects hx, HX the, the guitar into the hx then you send the output of one of the effects loops from the hx effects into the input of the amp then you send the output of the effects loop on the amp into the effects loop, the other end of that effects loop on the HX effects. Then you do the output of the HX effects into the other side of the effects loop on there. And what it does basically is it takes all your drives and stuff on the HX and you can put them before the amp. But you can put all of the delays and reverbs and all that stuff after. Which means that way you can use like the crunch channel on here and not crunchify all of your delays and stuff. Uh, if you were to plug the HX effects into just the front of the amp like I usually do and you had, you have to use a clean amp type or all of your other stuff will be distorted too. That's just how it is. So there's that. But that's, that's going to be this video. Uh, there will be more to come. Y'all keep an eye out. And as usual, like, subscribe. Let me know if you have any comments, thoughts, recommendations, suggestions, whatever. If there's something you want me to check out. And by the way, the, there's a video coming on these too. If you haven't used the chicken pick before, chicken picks. They're awesome. Um,